Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Dr. Moshmi Das and today I'm about to start a new series on anatomy of larynx. Now I've divided it into different sessions. This session is going to be about the extent of larynx, the divisions of larynx, blood supply, lymphatic drainage and the mucosal lining of the larynx. So let's start our class now. In today's session, we are going to be talking about the basics about the anatomy of larynx. Now, we'll, in this, we'll be discussing about the measurements of larynx, the difference in between the male and uh, female larynx dimensions, the extent of larynx, the divisions of larynx, and what are the planes causing these divisions. And uh, next, we'll head over to the blood supply of larynx, the lymphatic drainage, and lastly, the mucosal lining of larynx. Now first when we talk about measurements we will see that the male larynx and female larynx have a huge difference in the dimensions. Mostly all of them are way greater in males than in females. The length is about 44 mm in males and 36 mm in females. The transverse diameter is about 43 mm in males, 41 mm in females. The anterior posterior diameter is 36 mm in males, 26 mm in females. And even circumferentially, the males have about 136 millimeter and the females have 112 millimeter. So why does this difference exist? Now you'll see that in a children, uh, the, dif the difference in dimensions of larynx in males and females are almost the same till about puberty. Because after puberty, the male larynx undergoes a considerable increase in size. The thyroid cartilage also becomes very prominent. There are a lot of changes happening during puberty. And this is the reason why the male larynx dimensions are way greater than that in females. Next, we'll head over to the extent of larynx. Now, the larynx extends from the inferior border of the cricoid cartilage to the upper limit of laryngeal inlet. Now, we'll see in the picture over here, this is the level of the laryngeal inlet. And this is the level of the cricoid cartilage. So if we were to draw a plane over here, we will see it is actually lying opposite the C3 to C6 vertebra. One very interesting fact over here is that this la uh, the larynx, it lies higher in women than in men. Now, as, uh, uh, as we have seen the extent of larynx, next we will be divide, uh, discussing about how do we divide the larynx into different parts. Now when you come to divisions of larynx, we divide the larynx anatomically into three parts by two particular structures, the false cord and the true cord. Now the three different parts of larynx are the supraglottis, subglottis and the subglottis. Uh, now first we will talk about the supraglottis. The supraglottis commences at the level of epiglottis and epi, uh, AE folds also known as the array epiglottic folds. Now as you have seen in my video in anatomy of larynx when I talked about the laryngeal inlet boundaries I told you about the structures forming the boundaries and out of those structures are the epiglottis and the array epiglottic folds. So that is where the larynx is beginning. The first part of larynx is the supraglottis. This in the supraglottis also includes the arytenoids. And the lower border of supraglottis is a horizontal line which is drawn through the apex of the laryngeal ventricle. Next is the glottis. Now glottis, uh, the upper limit of glottis is at the same line as the lower limit of supraglottis which is a line drawn through the apex of laryngeal ventricle and the lower limit is a line drawn 1 cm below. This is very important. 1 cm below the free edge of the vocal folds. Now what are the contents that in, uh, include in the glottis? You will see it includes the vocal cords the anterior commissure and the posterior commissure. Lastly, the third part of larynx is the subglottis. Its upper border is the line drawn 1 cm below the free edge of the vocal folds and its lower limit being the lower border of the cricoid cartilage. Now, as we have seen here, we will head over to the picture over here and we will see the first is the supraglottic part which extends from the laryngeal inlet which is the epiglottis and the AE folds over here 
टू द लेवल ऑफ द एपेक्स ऑफ द लैरेंजल वेंट्रिकल एज ओवर हियर सो यू कैन सी दैट दिस होल रीजन इज द सुप्रग्लॉटिस नेक्स्ट द ग्लॉटिस इज द स्मॉल रीजन विच इज लाइंग इन बिटवीन द एपेक्स ऑफ द लरेंजल वेंट्रिकल एंड वन सेंटीमीटर बिलो द फ्री एज ऑफ द वोकल कॉड्स राइट ओवर हियर lastly the subglottis is the remaining part of the uh, larynx which uh, is extending 1 cm below the free edge of the vocal folds to the level lower level of the cricoid cartilage which is lying opposite to the c6 vertebra so these are the three parts or the three divisions of larynx supraglottis glottis and subglottis next we come to the lymphatic drainage of larynx Now, lymphatic drainage of larynx is separated by the vocal folds into an upper and a lower drainage systems. Now, the first, uh, the part above the vocal fold, which is the supraglottic larynx, it is drained by vessels which are accompanying the superior laryngeal vein. It pierces the thyroid membrane and it drains into the upper deep cervical nodes. the vocal folds interestingly you will see that it is firmly bound to the underlying vocal ligament therefore it has absolutely no lymphatics this is very very important to know why is this important because clinically you will see early cancers of vocal fold they do not readily spread to the lymph nodes because of this exact fact that the vocal folds do not have any lymphatic drainage lastly the infraglottic larynx which lies below the level of the vocal folds the lymphatics which are draining these they pierce the cricothyroid membrane go to the prelaryngeal also known as the delphian nodes and the pretracheal nodes and ultimately drain into the lower deep cervical nodes so we see that the supraglottic larynx the vessels are piercing thyroid membrane and draining into upper deep cervical nodes and the infraglottic larynx they are uh, piercing the cricothyroid membrane and draining ultimately into the lower deep cervical nodes as you can see appreciate in this picture this is the superior jugular group of lymph nodes this is the inferior jugular group of lymph nodes the upper part the supraglottic part is draining here and the infraglottic part is draining here Next, we head over to the blood supply. Now, first, we'll be talking about the arterial supply. The arterial supply of larynx is mainly by three arteries: the superior laryngeal artery, the cricothyroid artery, both of which are branches of the superior thyroid artery, and lastly, the inferior laryngeal artery, which is a branch of the inferior thyroid artery. Now, all of these three arteries they form a communicating plexus in the paraglottic space. importance of this is that this can be a source of brisk bleeding during endolaryngeal surgeries so when we talk about the course of these arteries first we'll talk about superior laryngeal artery as we know it arises from the superior thyroid artery then it passes deep to the thyroid muscle pierces the thyroid membrane along with the lymphatic vessels which are draining the supraglottic larynx also along with the internal branch of superior laryngeal nerve and then it supplies the larynx now this superior laryngeal artery it enters the paraglottic space at the anterior end of the ae fold surgical importance of this is that this artery is very easily injured in endoscopic laryngeal laser surgery therefore we have to take meticulous care to achieve hemostasis during supraglottic endoscopic surgical resection so superior laryngeal artery is very important while doing surgeries of the supraglottic region next is the inferior laryngeal artery now the inferior laryngeal artery it arises from the inferior thyroid artery at the level of the lower border of the thyroid gland it ascends on the trachea with the recurrent laryngeal nerve and enters the larynx behind the inferior constrictor and supplies the larynx lastly the third artery is a cricothyroid artery which also is a branch of the superior thyroid artery it passes across the upper part of the cricothyroid ligament and supplies the larynx importance is that this artery has up to 5 branches which penetrate the ligament 
this these branches can be injured during cricothyroidotomy or endoscopic resection of anterior commissure cancers we'll see in the picture here that is the supply the arterial supply the first one is the inferior laryngeal artery as you can see here it is arising from the inferior thyroid artery and the superior laryngeal artery is arising from the superior thyroid artery the superior thyroid artery is also giving the cricothyroid artery next is the venous drainage of larynx now the veins accompanying the larynx they uh, they have similar uh, drainage exactly similar to the artery now the superior laryngeal vein via the superior thyroid or the facial vein drains into the internal jugular vein as you can see here this is the superior laryngeal vein over here now via the superior thyroid vein it is draining into the internal jugular vein next the second one is the inferior laryngeal vein as you can see over here it is draining via the inferior thyroid vein ultimately into the brachiocephalic vein lastly some veins very few of them can also drain into the middle thyroid vein and ultimately drain into the internal jugular vein so there is a superior laryngeal vein draining into internal jugular vein the inferior laryngeal vein draining into the brachiocephalic vein and lastly the some of them drain into the middle thyroid vein and ultimately goes into the internal jugular vein last of all for this session is the mucous membrane of larynx now you'll see the mucous membrane it lies the larynx and is usually loosely attached except for some particular cases like over the posterior surface of the epiglottis the true vocal cords and the corniculate and cuneiform cartilages where the attachment of the mucous membrane is very tight now the epithelium which is lining the larynx is mostly ciliated columnar epithelium this is the image of the ciliated columnar epithelium if you can notice and appreciate the cilia lying and these are the column and these are the columnar cells lying here this is mostly the uh, lining of the larynx except for in some particular places which is the vocal cords and the upper part of the vestibule where it is lined by stratified squamous epithelium and now this here is an example of the stratified squamous epithelium you can see this part here now mucus glands are distributed all over the mucosal lining in the larynx but they are particularly extra and numerous on the posterior surface of the epiglottis the posterior part of the ae folds and in the saccules but a very funny fact here is that there are absolutely no mucus glands in the vocal folds now thank you for watching i hope you have found my video useful and take something away from it if you have any questions you can put them down in the comment section and i will definitely reply to you and please please subscribe to my channel and share with your friends if it has benefited you and i'll be seeing you in my next video